Are you wondering how to get the best video quality out of the GoPro Hero 11? After making several travel vlogs with this camera, I've come up with the best settings for the Hero 11, which I'll be sharing in this video. I'll start off by walking you through the interface of the GoPro and also showing you how to enable the brand new battery saving mode and the easy mode to start shooting right away. I will also take a deeper dive into presets and pro mode, which allow you to customize your GoPro settings for faster shooting at the highest image quality. Now, just a warning, there is a lot to unpack in this camera. So if the video is going by too fast, then feel free to use the start and stop button on the video to pause or play back the recording as needed. In case you're unfamiliar with GoPros, here's what the interface looks like. This layout is more or less what you'll find on the Hero 9, 10, and 11, but the Hero 11 is slightly different. Now, if you swipe down, you'll see seven icons. I turned the voice control and the beeps off, but I turned quick capture on. When my GoPro is off, this allows me to press the red record button on top to wake up the camera and start recording immediately without first turning on the power button. For the front screen, I like this to be the actual screen because full screen doesn't show you the full shot. And finally, I make the orientation locked for horizontal mode. If you have the orientation set to all, then it will flip between shooting vertical and horizontal video, depending on how you're holding the camera. And personally, I never shoot vertical video, so I just want that setting off. From this menu, if you swipe to the right, you'll notice a three button layout. Tap on the top left icon where it says video mode, and you'll notice that you have two choices. You can have this be set on highest quality, which gives you access to the top video resolutions and frame rates, or you can slide it down to select extended battery mode. When this is on, your video presets will be restricted to mid-range video resolutions and frame rates. So you won't get the highest quality video, but you will conserve battery life. For me, I leave the setting on highest quality because honestly, with the brand new Enduro battery, which is shipping with the Hero 11, I find that I don't really need to conserve battery as much as I used to. Now below video mode, tap on controls and you'll notice again that you have two options. Pro mode gives you access to all the presets and full control of the settings on your GoPro, whereas easy mode will restrict access to preloaded settings, so you just have to point and shoot and not worry about figuring out your exact settings. Now, if you're brand new to GoPro and you don't have time to fiddle with it, you might want to leave this on easy mode. However, if you're taking the time to watch this video, then switch it over to pro mode with me and I'll walk you through the best settings to use. But before we do that, let's also go over to preferences and select GPS. And make sure that this is turned off because this will help you save a lot of battery life. And I personally don't need the GPS data for my video files. Now from here, we're gonna back out to the main interface and talk about presets. GoPro presets first debuted on the Hero 8 and they give you predetermined custom settings that can quickly be enabled without having to deep dive into the menu. Now from earlier, you have to make sure that your controls are set to pro mode, not easy mode. Otherwise you won't be able to see the preset options. There are presets for video mode, photo mode, and time-lapse mode, but I'm not gonna go through all of them in this video. We're only gonna talk about video mode presets. So to cycle through the camera modes, swipe left or right on the back of the LCD screen or press the power button on the side of the camera. Now here in video mode, we're gonna go to the bottom center of the screen and tap on the oval and five presets will pop up. Now every GoPro Hero 11 comes with these presets by default. They're standard, full frame, activity, cinematic, and ultra slow-mo. You can tap on any preset to enable it, and if you want to double check or adjust any preset settings, then tap on the little pencil icon to the right of the preset. So over here in the standard preset, I'm going to show you the GoPro settings that I use for 90% of my videos, including all of my travel vlogs. The first setting is image resolution and frame rate. The top of the screen has your aspect ratio, which describes the shape of your video. Now, in most cases, you'll want to stick to 16 by 9, which is also known as widescreen, since it fills the whole frame horizontally. But you can also choose 4 by 3, which is full screen mode, and that is slightly wider. Or now there's a brand new third option that's new on the Hero 11, and that is 8x7. 
So because GoPro has a new larger sensor in the Hero 11, it's able to shoot an 8x7 aspect ratio, which is a super high resolution and it allows you to take a clip and crop in at other aspect ratios like 16x9, 4x3, or you can even crop in a vertical format like 9x16. And because it's so high resolution, you don't lose much image quality when you crop in. Now, why is this important? Well, if you're like me and you prefer to shoot your horizontal videos for YouTube, but you want the flexibility to crop in later for something like Instagram Reels or TikTok, then shooting 8x7 gives you that option. The only catch is that you're not likely to export your final video in 8x7, so you'll have to plan ahead to edit that video, and it also makes your video file larger. Now below aspect ratio are video resolutions, which range as high as 5.3K and as low as 1080p. If you choose 5K, then you end up with a really big file size that gives you the flexibility to crop into your image without losing image quality, but it does take up a lot more space on your memory card. And its usefulness is kind of debatable because most people are still watching media from TVs and monitors that are 4K and below. So personally, I stick with 4K resolution because I think it's high enough quality without the giant file size. And finally on the bottom are frame rates, which vary from 240 frames per second to 24 frames per second. Now a frame rate is how quickly a number of frames appears within a second. So the higher the frame rate, the slower the output. 120 frames per second is slow motion and 240 frames per second is super slow motion. So if you want regular speed videos, then you're gonna wanna stick with 60, 30, or 24 frames per second. 60 frames per second will capture more details than 30 or 24, but at the cost of taking up more memory card space. So I generally shoot in 30 or 24 frames per second. The next setting is lens, formerly known as field of view or FOV. Now, even though GoPros have a fixed focal length, they started to introduce digital lenses on the GoPro Hero 8 and above. These lenses give you a slight crop into your image and they can either reduce or exaggerate the fisheye effect. The Hero 11 comes with five digital lens options. At the widest is Hyperview, a new digital lens that gives you a 12 millimeter focal length that is ultra immersive and really great for POV shots. It's best used when the shot is level and you have a subject in the center, otherwise the sides get extremely warped. Hyperview can also only be used if you're shooting in 4K 60 frames per second or 5K. So it's a special use lens, but it's really fun to use. The next lenses are Superview and Wide, which are both great for getting that POV perspective, but at the cost of still having that warped fisheye effect. So if you don't want any warping, then you wanna go for the linear lens, which gives you the most natural perspective with no barrel distortion or fisheye effect. Now, brand new in the Hero 11 is linear with horizon lock, which keeps the horizon steady even when you're doing a full 360 degree rotation. Now, until now, horizon lock was only available if you use the max lens mod, which is purchased separately. And linear only had horizon leveling, which kept your horizon level up to 45 degrees. Now you can go a full 360 and still keep your horizon level, which is just insane. Next, we've got Hypersmooth, which is GoPro's in-body stabilization that first debuted on the Hero 7. Hypersmooth was the feature that first made us buy a GoPro and it gives you incredibly smooth footage without the need of a gimbal or a physical stabilizer. Now in the Hero 11, we now have the fifth version of Hypersmooth, which includes the all new Auto Boost. So video stabilization of action cameras and even smartphones acts by slightly cropping into a shot and making little micro adjustments to keep that final video stable. This is really helpful to have if you're making a lot of jittery movements like when you're running, but say you stop running and you start walking in a more steady form. Auto Boost works dynamically to slowly expand from that crop if you're walking steadily and crop in if you get to be more unsteady. This is very subtle and difficult to demonstrate, but it's such a great feature that I leave Auto Boost on whenever I'm doing any movement. Next is Scheduled Capture, which does exactly what it says. You can set a time for the camera to automatically wake up and start recording. 
Now, if you want to specify how long to record, that's the next feature, which is duration. You can choose from several increments between 15 seconds and three hours. So duration can be used by itself or in combination with scheduled capture. For everyday vlogging and filming, I leave both of these features off, but they can be really useful if you ever need your camera to auto record and stop in the future. The next setting is hindsight, which lets you capture 15 to 30 seconds of video before you hit the record button. So when it's enabled, the GoPro is continuously recording audio and video, but it only saves about 15 to 30 seconds prior to when you hit the shutter button. So say you're waiting for action, like a biker to come around the corner, and when you see that biker, that's when you hit the record button. Now, in most cases, you're going to miss the full sequence of action, but if you have hindsight enabled, it will automatically include 15 to 30 seconds of footage before you hit record. Now, the main downside to using hindsight is that because your camera is continuously recording, it's really going to eat up your battery life. So I would use it very sparingly only for situations where you absolutely need to get a specific moment. Next is the timer setting, which lets you set a three second or a 10 second time delay after the shutter is pressed. This is ideal for selfies or group shots, and it's not a feature that we often use, so it's usually turned off. The next section of settings is ProTune, which are advanced options that directly affect how good your final image looks and sounds. Now, speaking of sounds, this is a great time to talk about the sponsor of today's video, Epidemic Sound. If you're making a video and you plan to post it on social media, it's really important to make sure that you're using royalty-free music to avoid copyright strikes or having your content removed or restricted. This is where a music service like Epidemic Sound comes in really handy. They have an online catalog of over 30,000 high quality music tracks and over 90,000 sound effects. And they add new tracks every single week, so there's always something new to discover. Here on our tech channel, we mostly use sound effects like the whoosh for transitions or a bell or a pop whenever an icon appears. And we also sometimes use light background music to set the tone and the mood of our videos. So if you want to give them a try, sign up using my link in the description below to get a free 30-day trial. Any videos that you upload during your trial with epidemic sound music or sound effects will be forever copyright protected, even if you cancel your subscription right after your trial is over. So you've got nothing to lose. Thank you again to Epidemic Sound for sponsoring this video. And now let's get back to the GoPro protein settings. Now my explanations for all of these settings will be super quick and simple. I'm trying to not get too technical, but just know that pretty much every subject I'm gonna talk about here, there's lots more that you can look up separately if you wanna know more about them. Now first up is 10-bit color, which is a brand new feature on the Hero 11. In short, 10-bit color means that you're capturing more colors and details, and if you edit the video later, it gives you more flexibility to adjust the brightness, contrast, and color in your video without losing image quality. The cost is that 10-bit video takes up more space on your memory card, so you might want to use it sparingly. Next is bitrate, which refers to the depth of information in your videos. A higher bitrate means that you have higher quality video, but it also means a larger file size. Do we see a pattern here? <laughs> so if you want to conserve space on your memory card, then choose standard bitrate. But if you want to get the best quality video like we do, then choose high bitrate. Next to that is shutter speed, which determines how long the shutter stays open. If you're shooting a fast moving subject and you want to freeze the action and preserve detail, then choose a higher shutter speed like 1 384th of a second. But if you want to blur the movement or add more light into your shot, then you want to choose a slower shutter speed, like 1 24th of a second. But a majority of GoPro users, including ourselves, find it much easier to just leave the shutter speed on auto for most situations. Next is EV Comp, or Exposure Value Compensation, which lets you set the brightness of your image. I typically leave this on zero. Next is the white balance, which lets you set your color tones. And in most cases, I think it's best to leave this on auto, especially if you're out shooting in natural lighting. The only time I want to mess with white balance is if I'm shooting indoors with artificial lights, and I might want to have the shot be less warm or less cool. Next is ISO or ISO minimum and maximum. Now, very simply, ISO refers to how sensitive your camera is to available light. 
The higher the ISO, the brighter your image is in low light. But a higher ISO also introduces more digital noise or grain, which degrades the overall image quality. Now by default, the ISO min is set to 100 and the max is set to 1600. And that honestly works pretty well in most well-lit situations. But brand new in the Hero 11 is the option to set both the ISO minimum and maximum to auto. And personally, I really like the results, especially in low light. So I would leave these on auto. Next is sharpness, which determines the amount of detail in your image. Now your instinct might be to set this on high, but I would leave this on medium or even low for a more natural look. High sharpness really exaggerates the detail in your shot, and it's oftentimes a little bit too much. You can also add sharpness in post-production, but you can't fix an overly sharpened image. Now next is color. Like the Hero 10, the Hero 11 now has three color profiles. Vibrant, natural, and flat. Vibrant color used to be called GoPro color, and it's more saturated. Natural is less vibrant and closer to real life, and this is the default color profile. And flat gives you low contrast, low color image, and that gives you more flexibility in post-processing. But flat footage must be edited or post-processed, so if you don't want to do that, then you want to stick with either vibrant or natural color. Which one is best is up to your personal preference, and we personally like the vibrant color. Now here in this final section are the GoPro audio settings. First is raw audio. If enabled, you can select low, medium, or high, and this creates a separate audio file in addition to your standard video file. You only want to enable this if you plan to post-process your audio files, and for most of us, that's really above our heads. So I leave this off. Next is wind reduction, which can filter out excessive wind noise if you're using the GoPro internal mics or the media mod. This can be turned off, on, or auto, but I usually leave it on auto. And it is a touch windy. I think we've got auto wind reduction on. But yeah, this is what it sounds like. This is what it looks like. And finally is the media mod setting, which is grayed out and defaults to camera mics, unless you have the media mod attached. Now, if you don't know, the media mod is purchased separately, and it includes a built-in microphone and two ports that are missing on the naked GoPro, a 3.5 millimeter microphone jack and a micro HDMI port. So if you want to attach your own external microphone, then you have to use the media mod. But you can also just use the built-in media mod microphones. And this setting lets you enable either the front mic, the back mic, or turn off the media mod microphones completely and just use the GoPro internal microphones. Unfortunately, there is still not a setting to have both media mod microphones on at the same time. This was present in the Hero 8, but this feature was taken away on the Hero 9, and it's still not back. So to demonstrate my point about the media mod microphones, right now we've got the media mod front mics on, which again, is great for when I want to be in front of the camera, but if I want to flip the camera around and walk behind it, then I'm pretty sure you're gonna have a hard time hearing me. So bottom line, if you want the best possible audio on your GoPro, then you really should add an external microphone. I have a link in the video description below to a video comparing different microphone options on GoPros and how they sound. So check out that video if you want to know more. On the very bottom of the screen are shortcuts. You can set these to the features that you need to change or access the most often. And for us, that's digital lenses, 10-bit color, slow-mo, and media mod microphones. And on the very bottom of the screen is a yellow button that says Restore. And you can select this if you want the settings in this preset to go back to their defaults. So as a summary, here are the settings that we use in the standard preset, which is what we use for vlogging and 90% of our video making. For the rest of the presets, we keep most of the standard settings, but we make a few adjustments. For the full frame preset, this is what we set as our 8 by 7 aspect ratio preset. So the resolution and frame rates are maxed out at 5.3K and 30 frames per second. Unfortunately, you can't shoot 60 frames per second in 8 by 7 aspect ratio yet. We also have 10 bit color on, the bit rate is high, sharpness is low, and color is flat. Everything else is on auto, and we use the lower left shortcut to select the digital lens type. For the activity preset, I leave this on 4K 60 frames per second. And the lens is usually either hyperview for a POV perspective, or linear with horizon lock. And the other settings I change are shortcuts. 
I add hindsight, scheduled capture, and duration to my shortcuts so that I can easily toggle them on and off as needed. For cinematic settings, this is locked on 4K 60 frames per second, and the lens is linear with horizon lock because I don't want any of that fish eye distortion. And this is the one time that we will change the shutter speed to 1 1 20th of a second, which is double that of our selected frame rate. By definition, this is a cinematic shutter speed, which adds a slight natural looking motion blur to your video. Now the main catch is that in most situations, your resulting video will be too bright. So you definitely want to have physical ND filters to put on the front of your GoPro to balance out the light if you shoot in the cinematic setting. The final preset is ultra slow motion, which we actually set to regular slow motion, not ultra. As of the Hero 10, you can now shoot in up to 120 frames per second slow motion in 4K. So that's the setting that we have here. If you want ultra slow motion, then your frame rate goes down to 240 frames per second, which is still capped at 2.7K resolution. But for what we shoot, ultra slow motion is honestly too slow, so we don't use it very often. And there you have it. Those are the presets that we use on our GoPro, including an explanation of all of the GoPro settings, for video anyway. I would talk more about the settings for photo and time lapse, but honestly, this video is already running pretty long. So if you guys want to know about photo and time lapse presets and settings, then let me know in the comments below, and I'll do a separate dedicated video to that. But anyway, I hope this is really helpful. Uh, as you can see, there are a lot of settings packed into these GoPros. The Hero 11 has some newer settings that I think actually make it a little bit easier to use the GoPro. But hopefully you got some use out of this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, comment down below with any questions you have, and I will see you in the next video.